Um, Jesus Christ. Here we go. Can you tell I used to smoke a lot with the way I'm lighting this incense? Good God, man. Oh, get those spirits out of here. Ooh. All right. Oh, I'm like crying. So. Your reaction to that was so funny. You suck. <laughs> you suck, man. You're terrible. No. What's up, you goobers? Mark with Cardivox Academy here, and today we're doing something pretty cool. I feel like I say that all the time. Today we're doing something pretty cool, but it's because, you know, that's because we're doing something pretty cool. Today we are checking out uh, Tala, their uh, song LED, and yet again we're doing the one take vocal cover. We did this back a while ago with Overconfidence. But we're going to do something cool pretty soon here. I'm actually going to pull in Justin. Justin, the vocalist of Tala, uh, was cool enough to agree to do a co-reaction with me. Um, and I think it'll be really cool to, to have his insight while we do this. So if you're new to the channel, my name is Mark. I'm the vocalist in three bands, Kardashev, Never Breath, and Viramia. I'm also a vocal coach focusing a lot on distorted, gritty, death metal, deathcore stuff. So we take the reaction format here. We break it down. We make it educational so that you walk away having hopefully learned something fun. Um, and I'm hoping to learn something cool from this as well, because after the overconfidence video, Justin and I actually had a couple of uh, calls on Discord. And, uh, you know, one of the cool things is that a lot of stuff we do the same way and a couple things we do different ways. You know, there are a lot of different ways to create these sounds. So it's going to be really cool having his insight. Um, but anyways, let's go ahead and let's uh, let's get started. But before we do, go ahead and say hello, Justin. What's up, man? Hello. <laughs> What's up, dude? Like, listen, I appreciate you taking time out of your day. I know that uh, you've got stuff that you're that you're 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 a busy musician, man. Uh, so I appreciate you you taking time out um, to do this. Thank you very much, man. Thanks for the invite. I'm yeah. excited. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Oh, and also, uh, just in case anybody's curious, so on the Cardivox Academy uh, Discord, Justin is going to be hanging out with us uh, for a uh, for a couple a uh, couple Fridays during our. Um, gaming events we're going to play some jackbox maybe some among us we're going to have a good time but um so justin help me out here a uh, little bit is there anything we should know about this song before we before we get into it because usually you know i'm going into this stuff blind but maybe you can give me like a little a little inside a scoop here uh let's see so the the beginning of it is uh it's a little quirky i think it's in like seven eight so okay. i've noticed a, a lot of people when they watch it they're kind of thrown off at first and then once it kicks into like the four four, they're like, "All right, all right, this is cool." But <laughs> the, the beginning definitely throws people off. Yeah. And there's a couple like unconventional vocal techniques in here that I wouldn't recommend people trying. <laughs> okay, well, you know, and that's hey, that's fine. We'll talk about it. And you know, I think you know, you said the beginning is a little quirky. I think like I think like you in a quirky video. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't think so, man. I don't believe it. Um. No, I, I think it's going to be fun. One, one quick question for you. Um, so what does LED stand for? Because it's not, you know, it's the time, oh, name of the man. song. This this is the twist. Okay. It actually stands for light emitting diode. Okay, so I'm going <laughs> to. Uh, all right, so, okay. For everybody watching, I know what LED stands for, but I'm sitting over here like I totally did the thing. Anybody in a, who's in a band, somebody's asked you this before, like, what's the deeper meaning? And you're like, I don't know. <laughs> I just said I just said what I said. And I totally thought LED. So I, hey, everybody, Mark Card Fox Academy here. I'm an idiot. Um, anyways, so LED is LED. All right, cool. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, let's go ahead. Let's let's jump into it now that I've like made myself look like a dummy. Um, <laughs> let's go ahead and jump into it. I'm excited. Again, this is LED by Tala uh, and the uh, the vocalist, in case you're unaware, is Justin Bonnets. Let's go. All right, so I know we're only 39 seconds in, but I'm actually going to start it. I'm actually I'm actually going to pause already because you're already doing something really cool that's worth talking. About. You're already doing something that's worth talking about. So look at the face you paused it on, dude. 
<laughs> Hell yeah, man. You, you, you look like you just you look like you just had the macaroni with the chicken strips. Huh? <laughs> No, but anyway, um, yeah, I did pick a good frame. Look at that. That's the like, that's that's, perfect. that's a good one. It looks like, bro. Let's talk about some vocals, bro. It's like totally. <laughs> let's totally talk about vocals, man. It's gonna be a great time. Um, so, one thing you're doing that's really really cool is that you're using this this distortion. And I don't like love the term glottal compression, but I can't think of a better one. So we'll I, so I use it. But you're using like this kind of motorcycle. That's an analogy that you and I have talked about like this. Like you're using that kind of distortion. And the interesting mm -hmm. thing is a lot of times when when we're learning this or when we're teaching it, because you give lessons as well, um, we have the students start like, hey, ah, hey, hey, like up here. You, however, are much chestier. You've got a lot more weight in your voice and you're using this level of compression. Um, and that's fascinating to me because you don't hear that a lot of I mean other vocalists do it but but it's it's really really well controlled placement in an in a anyways I'm just saying it's 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 a little different and it's it's difficult for people to do that normally um did you kind of start with this like chesty weighty tone or did you start when you were doing this type of compression like way up high bright and then eventually learn how to add more of a warm timbre to it oh uh, so that's pretty much what I did uh I started doing vocals in 2007 and mm. I had this really like nasally speaking voice. So mm. when I did my glottal compression, it was really like, eh, and way up there. And it's just, a lot of people compared me to Chester Bennington and like Brett Scallions from Fuel. Mm. And I hated the way I talked. I hated the way I sounded when I listened to myself. And I used to love, I mean, I still love Five Finger Death Punch, but I used to like religiously listen to the way of the fist. And uh, <laughs> what was the other one? Ivan's other band. I don't Moto know. Grader. Sure. So I I brought I loved his voice and he's got that more like oh, type of voice. So I yeah. brought everything down more into my chest just so that I would like to listen to it better and not get that nasally tone. So it gave me more of that like ah instead of eh. Nice. It sound and it sounds great here and it sounds really really well controlled. I know that a lot of times when people try to bring their voice down what they'll do rather than opening and resonating is they'll pull their larynx down and we can and we can tell, you know, no surprise, but that's not happening here. This is a really really healthy vocalization and it's it's awesome. Um let's keep going. I'm going to go back a little bit so uh our, our so our viewers can hear a little bit of what we're talking about. Listen to as you're listening to this, listen to the mixture of this high place distortion with this nice chesty tone. Whenever, whenever we push play, here we go. Boom. Yo, so there's, again, there's so much that we can talk about there. Um, one thing that you're doing really, really well and that a lot of people want to do when they start doing vocals is you're doing these rapid fire, really quick um, sort of galloping syllables. And that can be that can be tough because it requires a, a lot of balance. Right. Um, and you're mm -hmm. doing it. You're doing it really, really well. Um, and it, I, I think, you know, in my experience in learning to, to do similar things myself and in teaching people how to do similar things, it can be hard to to. It can be hard to kind of relay what that balance feels like because it is it does not feel like as much work as it sounds. Right. What are some mm -hmm. what are some what are some ways when you're working with somebody or um, when somebody asks you like, man, how do you scream so fast? What are some things that you do um, to kind of explain how that's done? Explain how you get these fast vocals out, but with like a sturdy, a sturdy support and a really relaxed throat and chest. So the first thing that I always have to 
kind of because I ha- I have to like reverse engineer everything I'm doing in order to explain it to people. Mm-hmm. But w- mm-hmm. what I do is when I do my false chord stuff, I usually there's like the false chord stuff going on, yeah. but then the foundation of it is actually that glottal compression we were talking about earlier. Mm. So it's not like, you know how like a lot of beginner people when they're first learning false chord, they do those like breathy. <sighs> yeah. And if you try to do that and like, she don't want your breath, she go that double bad. Like you're, you're not going to be able to, you're going to be out of breath. Exactly. So when the base of it is, ah, it's really more like you're aggressively just like, she don't want your back, she go that double mattress. But then you do it with the false chord with there and you get, she don't want your back, she go that double mattress. And it's all just like the breath. It's like you're holding your breath and trying to just deliver vocals at the same time. Yeah. That's actually a really important, that's actually a really important thing that you just said and i'm glad that you said it um a lot of times when we're doing vocals we don't feel like we're breathing out of course we are right Mm -hmm. if we're literally holding our breath we we're not making sound but it 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 almost does feel like we we're holding our breath in a little way and i think uh i think that that's a really important thing for people to understand is that you're pressurizing your 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 lungs and then you're letting that air pressure work for you Versus mm-hmm. pushing this air out. So that's actually a really, really important, uh, important thing to point out. Also, I want to take a moment here to to point out to our viewers. So your false chord sounds that you just added sound much higher than mine. And so when you're at home, like because if, if any if this is anybody's second or third uh, Cardbox Academy video, you know that my false chords are like, <coughs> right? Um so if you're trying to learn false chord, make sure that you're allowing your false chord tone to exist in your natural voice first before you drop mm-hmm. it super low or drop it super high. Because I know, Justin, in a conversation that you and I have had for you, bringing your false chords low when you were first learning, you you handle it perfectly now was kind of difficult. And for me, it was very difficult. Yeah. And then for me, getting that false chord sound not in turning it into a higher vocal, but making it so I wasn't constantly stuck here. Like, oh, dude, that was a pain, right? So everybody's journey is a little bit different. Um, But I think that's all I wanted to mention there. Anything you want to add before we keep going? I mean, it's a little, it, I guess it's related. I actually learned how to do false chord vocals from doing fry vocals. So when I first started, I just did, I could only do fry high. So I was doing these like really high, like type of things. And I was like, I want to go lower with it. And what happened was as I went lower and lower and lower, my voice like just naturally transitioned into false chord. It was like, Mm. oh, and then I just kept going lower and lower. And then I was like, well, I like that sound better. Can I bring it up? And then I just went back up and held onto the false chord rasp. And that's actually how I got my highs like a lot of mm. people think my high screams are fry but it's like there's a fry is like ah and my highs are like yeah it's just way it's really weird no i've had that same i've had that same experience and that's a really good example of how playing with your voice and and allowing yourself to safely break the rules during your practice is actually pretty important i think um mm-hmm. for for learning i get that a lot as well too people say like oh man Mark, your, your fry vocals are, are, are pretty cool. And I always, I always come back and say like, I don't personally do a lot of fry. My high vocals, they're based on like that false chord grunt, but just relocated up higher. So, um, it feels different than a false chord. Anyways, we could get to the weeds with that. So Maybe we should just keep going, but um, <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> really, really good insights, though. I appreciate that stuff, man. So I'm going to go back a little a little bit here. Yeah, it's fascinating how you learned false chord from Fry. I don't know anybody who's nor- <laughs> who normally goes that way. That's wild. Even more ironic. I forgot how to do Fry after I brought it back up. Once I brought the no false way. chords up to the highs, I couldn't do Fry again for a good like decade. I just couldn't figure it out. I was like, how did I used to scream? And I just Whoa. couldn't do it. That's wild, man. Well, hey, I'm glad you found your way back, dude. Um, <laughs> all right, let's keep going here. I'm going to go back a little bit so we can hear it because it sounds like we got a transition coming up here. All 
All right. So we got to talk about that. <laughs> we got to talk about that. So one thing I talk to a lot of my students about um, is that there's a lot more to being a vocalist than just knowing how to make the sounds so much mm -hmm. more. Right. That's where you start. But there's a lot more to it. So this section for anybody who's out there who hasn't written any vocal parts, um, not for everybody, because we all have different talents. But this section for a lot of people, and I'll put myself out there, would be tough to write vocals over because like, you know, when you listen to this first time through, you're like, what time signature is this? <laughs> you know, there's no like there's no like ride like ting, 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 like like for, for you to anchor onto. Stuff's just kind of happening chaotically and a lot of vocalists, maybe myself included, would have been like, you know, let's let the song breathe for a little bit. I don't have to scream for the whole thing, but you did. <laughs> so I'm going to play this one more time. And then I just want to know, like, was this tough for you? So let me play it and then we'll talk about it a little bit. Here we go. Yeah. So like this next five seconds is, is nuts. Yeah. So was that tough to write for and to, to record in time? Or was it like, no, I just kind of listened for the percussion and, and went for it. It was really tough. Um, Actually, in this particular uh, video we're watching, I came in a little late. I never noticed that before. Oh, did you really? I didn't notice yeah. it either. So, hey, did, you did a good job. I don't know what the time signature is there. Like I said, I think it might be seven, eight, but. I don't I, I remember I asked Max our drummer a bunch and I can't even remember what he said but <laughs> to me it just sounds like a drum fill so what I did was I had to listen to the exact moment where that snare comes in where it's like bah, 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 and then it's just like I just tried to go with dun 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 and then yeah. there's another drum fill and if if I come in late there it like throws everything off so it's like I had to really time the crap out of it but mm. I really had to think about using my voice more as like a percussive instrument rather than like a melodic or like kind of like, like I'm a vocalist. It was more like, here's some more drums, but I'm saying things. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's actually a really, a really good point that you make because, you know, sometimes I feel like as metal vocalists, you know, sometimes metal vocalists or metal vocals get a lot of flack for it's like, oh, you guys are just always in one place. You're always like fulfilling one role which is right um but at the same time sometimes especially when you know our our bandmates write very complicated and very complex asymmetrical sections we have to take on a different hat it's like okay now we're the front like we're the front person in this band okay now i'm just another drum okay now <laughs> now i'm gonna just kind of like be behind the rhythm all right, now I just need to shut my mouth, you know, and that's not to say that metal is the only genre that does that. Many genres do it. But I think that that's one thing that I had to learn as well. Sometimes you have to be like, I'm not a singer. I'm a drum for the next for the drum. next five measures. I'm a drum. I'm a drum. Right. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. And then and then you drop it. You go from like these big, open, chesty screams into like this higher, brighter, kind of twangy uh, singing voice. So for anybody listening, this like half second two seconds here is quite acrobatic let's listen to it one time and then we'll keep going a little bit I see you doing that, doing that tongue movement there, uh, uh, getting that weird, like yeah, the, uh, uh, getting that resonance. That's what that, those vocals are. Any of those like uh, it's all just about creating that weird echoey uh, uh, sound in your voice. Um, you did something really cool here that I actually I actually wanted to point out. So you adjust the amount of true chord phonation that you have underneath your stream, your scream, stream, scream uh, when you start saying I'm your son. That's really cool. I want everybody to listen to this real quick. Now, one thing that's really important that you pointed out in your uh, vocal health PSA, I think was the title of that video, is mm -hmm. it looks like the way that you manage that 
is by pushing harder. But you and I both know, because we've talked about it, um, that that's performance. The the mm-hmm. change, removing the true chord, like, hey, hey, and switching it for the... <clears throat> switching between those two sounds is actually very relaxed. So... Um, First of all, first off, kudos for just like switching from like changing gears there. Um, But I'm sure you talk about this a lot with your students as well. Like strain does not equal good vocals. Um, And I just I don't know. I'm kind of that's something I'm just interested to hear your your thoughts on. Like how difficult is it or was it for you to to kind of figure that out? Like, oh, I can do all of these vocal styles really relaxed and I can just put the other stuff on for show. What was what was that like for you when you were learning? Oh, learning it was kind of easy. It's teaching it. <laughs> it's difficult. Teaching it is because tough, yeah. Because for me, it's like when I do those cleans and I go up there and do like the la, 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 like that's just global compression way up in this like tenor like ah area. And yeah. then after that, let's all, all I have to do is just drop into false chord. So it's like ah, I just drop my voice out and then the false chord's right there just waiting to like land on like for like a safety cushion almost. Yeah. So I, it's easy for me to do, but when my students are like, Hey, what are you doing? How do you do that? I'm like, ah, I I usually have them try to do exercises like, ah, ah," and just like pull their voice out back and forth. Yeah. And that's, that is so tricky for a lot of people to do because, you know, a lot of our, like most of, most of my students, well, actually, I've got students everywhere from like 19 to like 53, 54. Um, oh, man. And it's it's like you've spent your whole life being like vocal noises do this. Uh, right. And so being able to switch that to like <laughs> is is a tricky game. And it is it is tough to teach. But, you know, perseverance and patience and you will get it, viewers. Um, but anyways, let's keep going. But great, great transition there. Great switching of, of gears. And underneath all the performance, like just as a reminder to everybody, all of the actual vocal muscles here are are relaxed and being supported, yeah. being supported by open, open forward resonance. Ah, ah, and good breath support underneath and good breath support is is a whole conversation in and of itself. But let's let's go a little bit farther. You were channeling a little House of Pain there. <laughs> no, the way you're articulating kind of sounds like House of Pain. Pack it up, pack it in, let me begin. You got a little bit of that going. Yep. <laughs> Oh, nice. When I want that reflection, I hate me. I step away and I drown in a horse. Pause, I say, yeah. Cut it up, lost me, sweet. Rather than a bump, what the fuck do you take me for? When everything's a big step, she don't want to go back. She don't get to from that stress. No one can be made better than me. Step up and see what the fuck do you take me for? Whatever it is, a big step. She don't want to go back. She don't get to from that stress. So, re- we've already talked a lot about this vocal stuff, although if there's something you want to add, please, please do. But I think another thing I want to point out that I really enjoy about just you as a performer, not just a vocalist, but a performer, is that like you look weird, dude. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you look you look strange, but in a really fascinating and performative way. Right. Um like I know that when, you know, Carter Shift doesn't perform much anymore, um, but I know that when we did, people would kind of usually nicely sometimes not so nicely point out that i do like a lot of this weird stuff like i like look like i'm like muttering to myself and i like make all (laughs) these weird hand gestures and like there won't be any vocals but i'm just like looking beside the mic and i'm like just because i don't know you get kind of in the zone and um your you do a lot of your own brand of that and it makes me want to watch the video versus just have it on my monitor over here while i'm scrolling reddit and then you know if the song catches my eye great um it, it kind of it's kind of like you're there saying like, yo, pay attention like th- this four minutes and four seconds is important. And I think that as as artists, that's important for us to do is to be like, 
this is worth your time. So look at me. Right. Um, it sounds kind of pompous, but like, that's, that's what we do. Um, yeah, you're the front man. You're supposed to command attention. Yeah. At times that's, that's totally the case. So with all these movements, is this, is this kind of like how you've always been, or did you kind of have to develop your stage presence over time? Cause bro, I know when I started, I was like, I'm a vocalist. So I have to put my foot on a box and lean over when I do lows, <laughs> I have to put my foot on a box and I've got to do my lows like, right. So what yep. did you develop it over time? Or is this kind of just natural Justin? I totally developed it over time. Um, when I first started doing vocals, my first band, I was the lead vocalist and the lead guitarist. Oh, good. So I'm I'm just standing there trying to do two things at once, just being a statue, like look like I'm going to puke the whole time. And that was probably like 2007, 2008. And then what happened was around 2013, I started doing covers on YouTube. Yeah. And I was like, man, I can't just, this is boring to watch. I can't just stand here and be worried about looking cool. Like I got to just like dance around and just let loose. And yeah, if I just, it just, I started gesticulating a lot and making all kinds of facial expressions. And I'm just like, I'm just gonna not care. And it just spiraled out of control until we have what we have here where I just look like a freak. You know, it's so interesting how much in like life things get better when you just stop caring, you know, like, yeah. like, Oh, and you know what That's else it. is cool? Yeah, what else is cool? Um, so a lot of the stuff I'm doing, I'm not thinking about. It's like muscle memory. Mm. Like when I do my low screams, by default, I make this like face and just go. Ugh! And when I do my highs, I'm like, yeah, and my eyes just get huge. My eyebrows raise. Yeah. I'm like make a space for those high streams. So it's like I do certain things at certain times and I'm really not thinking about it. I've just done it so many times that sure. it's and I've watched myself doing it so many times in covers that I'm like, okay, when I do this scream, this is where I put my face. Mm -hmm. This is the face that I make. This is what I do with my hands. Yeah. And it just happens. It just happens. No, I, I totally recognize that as well. So my camera is at 29 seconds and uh, thir 29 minutes and 15 seconds. And I don't have one of those cool like automatic things. So we're going to go ahead and cut here real quick. Justin, if I could get a, a snap or a clap from you. Perfect. I'm, I'm on par with these claps. You, you, you're on point. They're all so beefy. <laughs> you got beef in them claps, bro. Um, that sounds weird. Don't say beef in your claps. Um, <laughs> yeah, that sounds a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. All right. So a little pause. OK, everybody, sorry for the little glitch there. Uh, my camera reached the 30 minute mark, so we had to uh, start it over. But we actually reached a, a good uh, a good ending point. We were talking about. Uh, developing well you were just there you just saw it we were talking about developing the um developing the uh the stage presence over time so i'm gonna go back just so we can kind of get back up to speed with where we were and then we're just gonna listen a little bit more it sounds like something's about to happen at the end of this song and um oh, something's about to happen at the end of this don't song. don't spoil it don't don't ruin it oh my <laughs> god no i'm kidding all right here we go let's go uh what are we at we're at 44 let's go like let's go like i don't know 10 seconds back here we go Step up and see what the fuck you take me for Whatever it is a bitch yeah. She don't want the best She gon' dance up the mattress No, I don't care. I don't <laughs> care. People are probably like, don't pause it now. And I say, stop telling me what to do. Stop telling me what to do. No. OK, so awesome guttural pulling that up. You just did like four things in one scream. Non yeah. non phonated guttural up through like up through fry territory. And then like this just straight up uncontrolled like <laughs> noise that actually it's just like a Muppet. It's yeah. Like, ah! <laughs> but it sounded so sick. And then you had that low, very kind of chesty, breathy singing, huh? which I can imagine that if you're doing another one of your like 14 hour live streams, you probably love that part because it's a little therapeutic, like, oh, right. Uh, you know, um, it's a nice catch my breath. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Holy crap. We're going to listen to that one more time. Also, you do this a lot. What's the story? Like, is that like 
<laughs> in every video I've seen of you, you you throw you throw this hand symbol up. Is there a story behind that, or is that kind of just like it's, what you do? Yeah, it's it's kind of a shot at uh, all the people who bullied me in middle school and high school. And yeah, I was a loser. So I'm like, who's who's the loser now, dude? <laughs> good for you, man. Good, good, good for you. Good for you. Well, you know what? We're gonna roll it back, and all of these all these L's are for them. <laughs> All these L's are for them. Here we go. cool bro give me a fucking second here <laughs> let me just get the demons out of my room jesus christ here we go can you tell i used to smoke a lot with the way i'm lighting this incense good <laughs> god man oh get those spirits out of here Ooh. all right oh, i'm like crying so your reaction to that was so funny you suck. <laughs> you suck, man. You're terrible. No. No, actually, that was insane. Um, so one of the reasons I, I wanted to wanted to bring you on the channel, one thing I was so excited about is you're like, I, I can do a lot of different vocal styles. I can do a lot of different stuff, but there are things that I, I can't do, right? Um, and that really high-pitched, like, thing you did. <laughs> That's like my secret weapon. Yeah. Like I, <laughs> I can't do that. I, I can't. And I almost like, I almost like don't even want to work on doing it because like, you know, at a point it's like this sound is kind of coined by these people already. <laughs> it's, it's like Travis Ryan's like weird singing. It's like, ah, do I really want to spend time learning how to do that? Maybe, maybe just for my own fun. But, um, that outro was nuts. Like, gross but in such a good way you know you know what i'm talking about like oh it's just like made me like i gotta brush my teeth after that oh <laughs> oh like there was so much all right so i want to find i want to find roughly just this outro again you have a lot of different things you're going i, I want to listen to it one more time honestly because i kind of stopped paying attention from like a critical standpoint and i was just kind of like <laughs> i was just kind of vibing um so like maybe right around here I'm going to stop it there because I know it's coming, but actually there's something really valuable to talk about here. So, um, you're you're very in in a very controlled way you're letting yourself have very loose technique and that's mm -hmm. something that's that's actually really important to do as well I, I when we learn when we my whole thing with vocals is that you should be safe and you should you should like the way you sound and it should convey the message you want to convey outside of that i don't really believe that there are many rules when it comes to metal vocals mm -hmm. Safety is non-negotiable. You have to be mm -hmm. safe and you have to be able to get your message across in a way that you feel confident about. Um, but like, let your voice break, let your voice crack, let your voice do all these weird things. And, and I'm not certainly, I'm certainly not the first like gritty vocal coach to talk about it, nor will I be the last. Um, but like, 
you're you're purposefully letting your your technique go a little bit here and it sounds yeah. awesome <laughs> um like in all intents and purposes like this is not proper screaming but because you've trained for so long and you've done this for so long you're allowed you're you're letting you're it's okay for you to let your body kind of make these little little adjustments here um and it sounds cool I, I mean, oh, you, got, thanks, you, got, man. you got anything to add to that? Because I, I just wanted to let you know, I think it's neat. I think you did. Hey, man, you did a, <laughs> you did a good job. <laughs> uh, I guess so that that opening kind of weird part where I'm like, Whoa! <laughs> like yeah. that part. <laughs> yeah. uh, I actually learned how to do that from copying the guy from Atreyu. No because, way, really? Yeah, because he's got that like, well, I can feel my heart pain. It's just like, oh, like yeah. a half, like half fry scream kind of weird kind of thing. Yeah. So I'm like, can I take that and do it with false chord at that same tone? And he got that like, and I'm just trying to like half just let my voice just fall apart under the stream to just yeah. make it sound more like mm -hmm. chaotic and emotional. Yeah. Yeah, there there are screams that I do. Uh, they don't sound like that um, at <laughs> all. But there are some screams that I started doing in the almanac um, where I I just was like, OK, I'm going to allow my voice to fall apart a little bit here. And when you do it properly, it's it's perfectly safe and healthy. And then there's this. I'll just be real, man. I'm this. Sound, this sound ain't coming out of me anytime soon. I can fucking I can I can smell that from here, dude. Woof. I can see like the veins in my head. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so one you you know being a vocalist yourself and being being a being a, a coach yourself, this is likely the most common question you get more than anything. Was that false quarter fry? Um. <laughs> so let me ask you. I actually can I guess first? I'm totally I'm yeah, to sure. I'm totally willing to be wrong here. I'm. <laughs> I'm wrong a lot in a lot of parts of my life. Usually with vocals, I'm pretty, pretty good. But I, I, I want to guess first. To me. All right, let me hear it one more time. <laughs> it's a mystery. It's a mystery. Here we go. Also, I love that you just do like the like the like you're just flexing, just dude. The, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say that's fry driven. That's to me. That sounds very fry driven. <laughs> it sounds like you're 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 working with a very well supported, very like nasally pitched fry. It, it like, I can't like my voice is just lower than yours. Um, but like, it's like you're placing it. Eh, 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 like you're kind of putting it through that space, but allowing that fry yuckiness to come through. That sounds so crisp and good. So that's my guess. Totally willing to be wrong. How would you oh, describe man. it? Are you are you ready? Oh God, here we so, go. So it's actually false chord. I almost don't believe and you. I almost don't believe I, you. I'll I'll show you how I do it. Okay. So the undertone of it is a G four. I just had to double check on the piano. My vocal break is at F sharp four, so that's where I would do fry. But so I take that ah, uh, and I add the glottal compression to it ah, uh, and then when I do my false chord, yeah. You put those two things together and you get, yeah, and then I just place it real high up in that nasally area to go, yeah, and it just gives it that extra like phonetic tone. Yeah. But the reason it sounds so much like Fry actually is because it's so freaking loud that my mic is clipping. So you're actually hearing vocal clipping in the screen oh. as well. So if you go back and listen to it, you can probably hear it now. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that. Uh, that right there. As soon as the high comes on. As soon as what? I said as soon as the high hits, you can just hear it just starts clipping. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. 
That was a fine wine, good sir. <laughs> Thank you so much. No, I hear it now. I totally hear it now. Yeah. It's I totally just hear it on now. the highs too. Like everything else is nice and controlled. But those highs, because it's above my vocal break, I have to just the note itself is that ah uh, is a really loud note compared to like ah. Uh, it just goes up past my vocal break into a mixed voice. And it just gives it all this extra power that just mm. makes it like, Ugh! and then there's so much compression happening because if you've seen my PSA, you know how much I care about over projecting. Yeah. So it's like, I'm compressing so much that you just, it's kind of like that, you know, the thing you do, I always do it to the camera to kind of show people when you yeah. like hold your breath and try to like push it out at the same time. And you get that weird, like, Hmm. Oh my gosh, you'll see it because I know you can't see me in the camera, but you yeah. just get these gnarly veins pulsating out of your oh, head. Oh, yeah, 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 so yeah, 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 yeah. It's associated with the actual compression. And then underneath that is just a little, it's like 30, 40% projection, but there's so much compression that it just allows it to just, and just get crazy. But what really, what really drives it in the, the, that it's a false card is that when I actually do my fry streams, it sounds nothing like that. They're very like pterodactyly and like, yeah. yeah. And even if I try to add voice underneath it, I get that almost like Devin Townsend, like, ah, type of stuff, which sounds yeah. nothing like, yeah. <laughs> like no, even yeah. this mic that's clipping. No, you're, t yeah, you're, you're totally right. And I think that for any of my viewers out there, don't, don't start here. Like if you're don't, don't if you're just trying to start metal vocals, like save this for six months from now. Um, save save this for after you have uh, figured out the fundamentals. Um, well, listen, man, I think that I think that that's probably I'm getting some smoke eye here. Um, <laughs> oh, I should probably talk about that guttural at the end. Oh, actually, yeah, no, we you totally, I totally you totally should. My mind. Um, well, there there were a couple. Are you talking about the one that kind of leads into that section, or the, no, just the real long pig squealy one? Okay. <laughs> I think it's coming up here after this, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I'll start here. I have some thoughts about this guttural too, but I want to hear you. I want to hear you first. So I learned how to do gutturals just from doing like false chord and tongue placement stuff where you just get that like <laughs> kind of idea. Yeah. And I just have this wimpy tenor voice. So I'm like, no, that's not good enough. Dude, your I voice more. Your voice is many things, but wimpy is not one of them. <laughs> it's just like, oh, like I'm a tenor. So I was like, it's not good enough. It needs to be more it can't just sound like water going down a drain. It sure. needs to sound like, um, what's the name of that band? Guttural Slug. <laughs> oh my God. Guttural Slug. Yes. <laughs> With the, like, yes. the cricket vocals. Yes. So I was like, it needs to be like that. Yeah. So yeah, what yeah, happened yeah. was I keep compressing the false chord until it's not even false chord anymore. I just go. <gasps> and then you're just hearing like the compression, just that sound yeah, yeah yeah and then I, then because there's no voice anymore mm -hmm. i start projecting like crazy to get this <laughs> sound and then the tongue placement and everything comes in and i just get <laughs> and it just sounds insane but yeah. there's so much pressure coming to my head every time i do it i have to like grab the wall for a second because i'm like i think i'm gonna pass out so I think what uh, Justin is trying to say is that uh, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. You know, I, <laughs> I, I, I also am guilty of having a few screams on Kardashev albums that I did, and I was just like, never doing that again. <laughs> never doing that again. Although, but it's interesting that you say that because sometimes I'll do that with my gutturals as well. It's so you know one of one of the most interesting things that is. I've get, gotten from our vocal talks is how you and I will do the same thing, but because of our anatomy, it sounds mm -hmm. so different. And I think this is such an important thing for people to understand when they're looning vocals is like, I mean, think about it this way. If you say, Hey, what's up? And I say, Hey, what's up? We sound entirely different. We're using the same mm -hmm. technique, true chord phonation, but we don't sound the same. We're different humans. We're di we got different shapes. If I take my guttural, <clears throat> right. And I sort of add that like pressurized, like, thinner like 
right? I don't have as much phonation, but I'm essentially doing the same thing. I'm adding a lot of pressure to it. Um, mm-hmm. I also wouldn't do that for long periods of time, but I'm taking that false <laughs> <Nope>. chord. <laughs> yeah. Until it's just, until it's just pops, right? It, it, it almost sounds yeah, like there's like, like air bubbles. It's just <laughs> air bubbles. And it, it, it feels to me like there's false chord and fry going on at the same time. <laughs> but for me, it's like so thin and, and, and different. Again, I don't have that phonation under there, but it's it's a really it's a really important thing to to drive home. And this is also a sound that you have clearly worked on a little bit, right? Oh, years, years, years and years. And that's another thing too. Like, if you're out there, don't compare. Like, don't compare your vocal that you've worked on for three weeks to the vocal that somebody has worked on for years. Right. Yeah. No, it's, That's what I tell my students yeah. too. I say never compare your chapter one to someone else's chapter 20. Yeah. Like you'll get there, but it's like, I've been doing vocals since 2007. That's like what, 14 years. Mm-hmm. You're not going to sound like that three weeks into lessons. You have yeah. to practice and put in the work. Yeah. I always, I always tell, tell my students like, listen, if at the end of these lessons, you feel comfort and control your vocals are more comfortable and you feel more in control of them. That's amazing. Like that Uh is, that is the base level. That is where you start to become, uh, you know, to become somebody who can go from being inconsistent and just getting lucky with their voice sometimes to somebody who, whatever you're doing, even if it's not your end goal, you can do it well. And every time, um, all right. So this video, your video is gonna be almost an hour so we should oh my god yeah so we should probably wrap it up there but listen i really appreciate you coming on i really appreciate you giving me some insight um not just into the things that i know about but some of the things i don't know about as well i feel like it's fun i'm usually doing the teaching in these videos but i feel like i got to teach and learn a little bit so i really appreciate that is there anything you want to plug before you go and call out your channel to any anything at all that you want to plug this is this is your moment to be like yo oh, this is my moment. this is justin this is your moment man <laughs> i mean i guess i've got a couple different channels um hungry lights is my main one that's where i have like my vocal tutorials and stuff like that and where i put like my solo stuff tala is obviously my band um i think we're putting out some stuff this year cool so Keep your eyes open for that. And then I also have a cover channel, Hungry Covers, where I just do covers. So there's some really cool stuff. But that's kind of how I learned how to do a lot of the vocals I do is just trying to copy other vocalists. And so the cover channel kind of shows like, hey, I can do this and I can do this. But then it's like once you start teaching vocals, you have to learn how to teach that to someone else and then you start learning all kinds of stuff and you're like i didn't even know i could do that (laughs) yeah dude i'll tell you when i started doing vocal lessons because i've been doing them for for years but um full-time recently but when i started doing vocal lessons a couple years ago i was like man this is a whole new skill here um so i i got mad respect for the fact that you you uh you perform and you teach that's that's really cool because they're they're two separate skills and combining them is pretty difficult um but yeah justin gives vocals i are vocal lessons i give vocal lessons reach out to either of us um anything else you want to plug man anything else you want to promote um i mean i'm working on some new solo stuff uh it's for a project called call it ego Mm. and uh that's coming out this year it's got some pretty cool vocal stuff on it um I think the one of the songs I actually sing in Japanese, so that'll be fun. Nice. But uh, I don't I don't have a date for it yet. But that's like the big thing that I've been working on mostly for 2021, and I'm hoping to release it in the spring. Hell yeah! Well, we'll keep an eye out on that, and and uh, I know I'm looking forward to it. So let's go ahead and let's sign off the video again. If you liked the uh, content, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. I do appreciate it. It helps out with the algorithm. Feel free to check out my other videos, but also make sure to go and check out Justin's videos. If this is your first introduction, we'll have the channels in the description below. Go subscribe, show him some love, give that uh, give that algorithm a little nudge. Um, you want to do my sign off? I always do my sign off. You want to do it? I'll tell you what it is because you probably yeah. don't know. Okay, so. I'm going to count down and and you're going to say many thanks, much love. I'm out. And then we'll cut the video. So here we go. I'm going to count down. You ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Many thanks. Much love. I'm out. (laughs) 
<laughs> Dope. Good job, man. Good job.